Photoshop's new spin filter is an excellent way to create circular motion effects to emulate the rotation of an object. In order to make the wheels look like they're in motion, I'm going to begin by converting this background into a smart object. That way, if I need to make edits at a later point in time, I can. Then I'll choose Filter, Blur Gallery, and Spin Blur. As soon as we select Spin Blur, Photoshop is going to create a default ellipse. We can use the pin in the center of the ellipse in order to reposition the spin. Then let's go ahead and zoom in, maybe one more time, and reposition the image so that we can see the spin blur. Now we can use the blur ring right here around the pin in order to increase the amount of blur or the blur angle. You'll notice that I can also use the slider over here in the panel in order to adjust that. I'm going to go ahead and reposition it a bit more now that we've zoomed in. Then in order to resize the ellipse, I can click and drag the borders down. If I select the ellipse handles, I can then reshape and also rotate this ellipse. I'll go ahead and use Command Z in order to undo that. I can also use these feather handles to change the fade range or the distance between the area that's being blurred and the area that's not being blurred. I'll go ahead and move those out for now. But what's unique about the blur is that instead of moving the feather handles independently, if the blur is off center, you can hold down the Option key or the Alt key on Windows and click and drag the pin in the center in order to move the rotation point. Again, I'll use Command Z or Control Z in order to undo that. Now I'm going to move the blur angle up quite a bit. And then let's take a look at the motion blur effects. You'll notice that I can control the strobe strength and that's going to determine how much blur will show between the flash exposures. So set here at zero means that there's going to be no strobe effect. As I move it over to the right, we can see the strobe effect in the image area. Now we can also determine how many strobe flashes there are. Right now it's set to four, but I'm going to bring that down so that there's only one flash. Then underneath where it says the strobe flash duration, this is measured in degrees, but basically it's going to allow me to set the length of the flash. So I'll go ahead and scoot that up a little bit and you can see here that it's what I'm setting is actually how much um, distance there is on the circumference of that blur. Excellent. Let's go ahead and zoom back out here. And I want to make a duplicate so that the back wheel is spinning as well. So I'm going to hold down the Option and the Command key, or the Alt and Control key on Windows, and then drag this spin over in order to make my duplicate. Once I like the blurs that I've achieved, I'll click OK, and then we'll zoom in again here using Command Plus, and then I can reposition so that we can see the effect here. And the reason that I applied this to a smart object is because there might be times where the blur is actually going outside of the area that you want it to affect. In this case, for example, it might be a little difficult to see, but it's actually blurring the area underneath the tire where it would be flat. So I'll select my brush tool by tapping the B key, and then I'll choose the Smart Filter. I'll tap the X key to exchange my foreground and background colors so that I'm painting with black. I'll get a little bit larger of a brush and then I'll click and drag in order to paint with black on the smart filter to hide the blur from the areas that I don't want it to affect. So there you go, an easy way to create realistic spinning effects in Photoshop.